Hey guys, welcome for another video you are watching. Hey all, uh, welcome back uh, for MCP Security Masterclass. So uh, going forward from this video, we're gonna start with each section. So we, we're gonna discuss uh, some of the basic aspects and try to uh, cover some of the deep sections, uh, something related to the architecture or some of the uh, you know areas like where security is more needed. So if at all, if you feel that there are some information that you might need to understand more, please let us know in the comment section so that I can make uh, more context on that or try to explain more deep into that, right? So yeah, uh, let's start with our first section, MCP fundamentals and architecture. I'm not sure how many people uh, are aware about what is MCP and why did it come into existence and uh, what are its benefits. So uh, just to uh, give some overview about why and what problem does MCP solve. If you think about agentic AI, agentic AI was a kind of revolutionary as part of Gen AI on top of LLMs that came existence, right? So now uh, when you think about individual uh, work or individual tasks that you wanna achieve as part of agentic AI, let's take you wanna, uh, you wanna read agent to read to the emails and parse the emails and, and uh, uh, schedule the calls based on the incoming leads and send out emails for respective people. Now you want to have this particular agentic AI, uh, uh, AI template uh, developed, but the kind of integration that you want to do with the individual LLMs is kind of different because the kind of SDK that, that they have come up with will have a different way they're going to uh, talk or communication, right? So that is where if you have a EM agents, then EM LLM, the kind of integration again duplicates with n times of the m agent that is n into him right but uh, this became too many uh, too much uh, time or managing uh, uh, power because if you're dealing with the uh, agentic ai with 50 different uh, scenarios and you want to provide a support for all the llms the kind of scalability and manageability and reliability uh, affected right that is where how does uh, that is where MCP came and it is trying to solve this yum part. Anyhow, because we can't uh, we can't change uh, change how LLM behaves because that is not something in our control. But how our agentic AI uh, can behave is something that we have in our control because those are the uh, you know uh, services that we have developed, right? So. MCP is providing a platform where you can integrate or develop a tools with MCP protocol. And once a tool is ready, it provides a kind of convenience that you can integrate with any kind of LLM. You need not to worry about redeveloping or re, uh, redeveloping the tools or redesigning your tools based on the kind of LLM that, that you want to interact with because this is like a switch for a switch. You can connect to any LLM you want, but behind the thing, the current supply or whatever the power supply or internet supply that going to happen, it like it's going to happen, right? I'm just giving a generic example to just to show you uh, how it behaves. Uh, I have a, a, some small tool of my home, which uh, I have developed for general uh, use case for let me uh, talk about this. If we have agentic AI behavior in earlier dates, I, I, I mean, like I was supposed to have an NMAP separate agent, what web, sub finder, for each individual task, individual tools, we should be having a separate agents, right? Now I have to, if I want to integrate with some automation, I should have a LLM dedicated SDK and a code developed on, on top of that. But with MCP, I can have a one simple code that calls all these tools based on the protocol that is uh, STDIO or, or HTTP or SSE, right? Which we want to discuss later. Now uh, you have a code ready, which serves the MCP, I mean, like, which can invoke MCP protocol and can be integrated. And each IDE comes up with the kind of format that it supports for in, uh, MCP integration. It can differ from uh, 
uh, IDE to IDE. I'm using a wind server for like a, a, if you're using cloud eight, like it will be different. If you're using VS code, it can be a different. So as part of wind surf, this is how it looks like. And this can be now if at, if, if at all, if I want to use it for cloud A, the same code, the same, uh, the environments or execution, just the kind of integration that we do with the cloud A differs. We don't do anything with our code, right? Now, uh, now how this actually makes a job simpler. Now with a simple one execution, I can interact with all the tools. For an example, just few minutes before I triggered, uh, you know, uh, query like fetch me all the subdomains of amshern.com it, it and the LLM is having capability in such a way that it went through my MCP servers, whatever it is there. And among the, it identifies which tool it should, uh, you know, execute to get the information what the user is asking. It identified that it should uh, execute the sub finder, which I have as part of this, uh, you know, MCP server and it executed behind the scene and it gave me the results, you know, uh, whatever I wanted, right. In an easier way and a convenient way. Suppose in a, in, in the same way, if I want, like, uh, can you, uh, fetch the SSL search of I am Sharon.com using nmap and analyze for any security issues. Now, if I provide this prompt, uh, okay, I gave spelling mistake. Uh, now it's gonna go to hallucination or it's gonna try to figure it out on its own, but let me resolve the uh, spelling mistake. Yeah. Now what uh, the LLM will do in a sense, LLM will get to know, okay, now the user is asking me to fetch as a certificate of amsharan.com using nmap and do security analysis, right? So uh, now what it do, uh, it, it executed my MCP server behind the scene, if you can see and it was able to fetch the SSL certificate uh, 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 based on uh, the tool execution and now it is doing the analysis on that particular certificate to identify any kind of security issue if I have. Now uh, if you observe it gave all the informations like amsharn.com and the uh, signature and the protocol enabled and security strength, all those things, right? So this is how uh, the MCP is making the job simpler and so convenient. Now, if I wanna ship my MCP server to any client, just change the configuration that it runs on, makes the job much better, right? So this is what uh, MCP and how it uh, uh, solves the uh, problem. So now let's talk about MCP architecture. <laughs> Uh, if I want to talk about eye level, uh, there is a uh, three, uh, four layer of communication that happens when when one is interacting with the uh, MCP behind the scene. One is host application. It can be a cloud desktop or it can be a windsurf, uh, uh, you know, application or it can be a chat GPT, web connector or, or VS code, uh, you know, MCP connector like it can be anything, right? That is the client side uh, application that it will be utilized. Now one is MCP client that is a protocol handler, uh, which handles the uh, communication between the client uh, application and the, uh, the proxy or the MCP server. Here we have something like MCP remote, which I use as a client protocol to trigger. You have uh, something HTD IO that, that you can utilize. If you use a MCP remote, it will go on HTTP. We will going to uh, uh, you know, learn about what is HTD IO and HTTP uh, uh, transport and what SSE transport in MCP. But I'm just giving you idea how and what uh, uh, are these. And MCP server is where our actual server or queries are running and how uh, they are getting converted from the natural language to the, uh, uh, the kind of format uh, that will be accepted from our backend. For an example, here 
this is my ncp uh, server code where i have all these tools integrated and i have a code to convert the general uh, query uh, language to the desired format whatever the format for an example if you see here right uh, i think the terminal output uh, uh, where it went yeah it is here right here if you can see how did uh, my server get to know you have to execute uh, this particular thing and uh, up, I mean like almost all these things right because we have that uh, kind of configuration in the server to parse the user input take some keywords whatever it is and uh, uh, utilize or consume as part of the process that we have to push for a server side now we have the actual external systems uh, uh, or APIs or a DB calls or a files. Now, uh, this MCP server is a kind of a proxy between the actual APIs or a tools and the clients. For an example, here uh, we executed an nmap and a subfinder in this scenario. Here, my nmap and a subfinder are my external services because those are not a services that I own, right? Those external services, but I have a server which can invoke those tools. That is what my MCP server. Now this, my server is just a proxy between this LLM and the client that, that I'm going to interact and the, uh, the external service, which I invoked. I hope I made it very simple and easier for you guys to understand just to reword it. You want to have a client desktop that is can be a uh, you can have a wind server for a cloud a whatever you want and it's gonna have the mcp client and configuration embedded to tell what kind of uh, protocol that you're going to use when it's configured uh, then you can call there to invoke the mcp server because if this is not uh, configured uh, properly for an example i remove this section uh and sorry i am mean, like i uh, i didn't save if you, you can see right i just modified uh the kind of protocol it tried to execute now my client is not able to connect to my mcp server so this is something uh, very important when we are configuring the mcp uh, client with the mcp server and uh, behind the scene, we have external systems that is configured the, uh, like our MCP server to uh, perform a task that we want to invoke, right? And uh, we have the four pillars of MCP, uh, which we're gonna which we're gonna discuss in the next part of uh, this video. I hope uh, you guys have a, a clear understanding about the architecture and why MCP came in and. Uh, what is MCP? If at all, if guys have any doubts or in need more clarifications or need more information, please let us know in our comment section.